The really funny thing about web dev is that for the past 15 years we had to pretend things are more complicated than they need to be for the sake of job security. These days you need to know a handful of frameworks, several build tools and a bunch of crazy architectural patterns just to be taken seriously as a junior dev. But when you strip away the layers of nonsense, building for the web isn't supposed to be painful. And this is where the boom stack comes into play. The idea behind this stack is kind of appealing. Keep it simple and remove all the clutter. After years of JavaScript fatigue, we all reached a few clear conclusions. We don't need to move megabytes of JavaScript over the wire just to render a few elements on the screen, we don't need the over-engineering noise, and for certain, we don't need large frameworks with hundreds of dependencies that can be compromised with a basic phishing attack. And, granted, while you might not get the chance to use this stack in your day-to-day -day life anytime soon, reviewing these technologies is a really good exercise since these are some of the main trends driving the future of web development. So, let's not waste any more time and jump right into it. If you're new here, what you probably don't know is that the only thing I enjoy more than writing code is finding new and creative ways to lose my hard-earned money in the stock market. So for the next few minutes, we'll build a small app that allows us to monitor stocks and alert us when the price is hit an all-time high. Because the only thing I'm actually good at is buying high and selling low. So we'll use BAN as the JavaScript runtime, we'll use Astro to handle both server-side rendering and to generate a basic REST API, we'll persist our data in a basic Mongo collection and we'll use HTMX and Alpine to implement the UI. Let's start by installing BAN locally since it is going to do all the server business logic and rendering heavy lifting for us. If you are not familiar with it, BAN is a modern, performant JavaScript runtime that acts as a Node.js replacement. It has a long list of selling points, but I consider it a good match for us, mostly because it's a step forward compared to Node when it comes to TypeScript support, web API integrations, and overall speed. Next, let's add Astro into the mix using their init command. Of course, we'll use TypeScript as well. Astro projects are structured around a file system-based router where we can define pages and components. The main selling point of Astro is its server-side rendering and islands architecture, which keeps apps lightweight and snappy. Components are computed on the server, which returns to the browser static HTML that can then be simply rendered on the page. Any type of JavaScript interactivity can then be sprinkled in with Astro integrations, but we'll get back to this in a second when we'll discuss HTMX and Alpine. We'll start by adding an input in the index Astro page, which allows us to search through various companies listed on the stock exchange. Quick side note, Astro also offers a smooth layout system so we can easily reuse repeating elements, headers, or in our case, the HTMX library. So we want users to be able to type in this field and get back some results. And of course, since we don't want to do a full page refresh after each search, we'll sprinkle in some HTMX magic. With just a few self-explanatory attributes added directly in the markup, we can make our element trigger a sync request to the server and swap parts of the HTML content with the received response. In our case, whenever the input is changed, a GET request is sent to the server. And of course, we don't want requests to be triggered for every single keystroke, otherwise our backend would get absolutely hammered. Luckily for us, HTMX comes packed with a seamless throttling mechanism. Next, let's add the backend logic needed to handle this request. This is easier than you might think, thanks to Astro endpoints. We'll create a new file called search under the API directory and we'll export a GET function to capture any incoming request to the search URL. Here, we'll get the search query, pass it to a third-party service, which publishes stock prices, and then we'll return a chunk of HTML containing the matching results. Remember that all this runs on the server through BAN. Back on the client, we might want to improve the user experience and add some nice UI interactivity. Sure, we could do most of this with HTMX, but Alpine lets us push things a little further without dragging in a heavy UI framework. Alpine is perfect for cases where you just want small bursts of behavior tied directly to your markup. For example, maybe we want to highlight the stock that just hit a new high, or show a quick dropdown with extra details when a user hovers over a result. So we'll add it in our project using the Astro CLI, and then we can conditionally render some classes on the resulting element with just a few directives. This way, we don't need to wire up an entire state management system or drag in some massive React component library just for some basic UI improvements. Sure, there is an overlap between HTMX and Alpine, and some would argue that you don't really need both. And in some cases, that's true. If all you're doing is swapping chunks of HTML from the server, HTMX alone might be enough. But the reality is that once you start adding small interactive touches, Alpine makes your life easier. For the next feature, let's add another layer to the mix. First, we'll let our users add any of the searched companies to a favorites list. 
Again, we'll do this server interaction easily thanks to HTMX. Clicking on the hard button will trigger a POST request to a favorite endpoint, which will be captured by an Astro file placed under the API directory. Once we have the company details, we'll store them in MongoDB, which works out of the box with BAN. So let's go ahead and install it, and then we'll create a schema.ts file where we'll define a company model. The advantage of MongoDB is that it lets us stay flexible with the data we store, and that flexibility comes from how it structures information. Instead of rigid tables, with strict schemas like in SQL, MongoDB organizes everything into collections. A collection is basically a bucket of documents, and a document is just a JSON-like object. In practice, it means we can store all companies inside a single collection, where each company has its own fields, and then we can still evolve the shape of those documents over time, without rewriting migrations for every small change. In a database service file, we'll first connect to MongoDB using a single long-lived connection. Opening a new socket per request wastes resources and slows everything down. A module-level singleton keeps one connection alive and every handler reuses it. The service will expose two methods. One will store the company in the database and the second one will be used to fetch all entries from the collection. We'll use this method in a new watchlist astro file. In the coding section of the component, we'll simply import our database service and call get favorites to retrieve the list of companies. Then, in the HTML section, we'll loop through that data and render a simple list of the saved stocks. Again, thanks to Astro's server-first model, this will be rendered on the server and sent down as plain HTML, which keeps the client fast and responsive without extra JavaScript bloat. To make the experience smoother, we'll hook up HTMX again, so that whenever a company is added, the watchlist updates without a full page reload. The API endpoint can just return a partial snippet of HTML and HTMX will swap it directly into the watchlist section. So at this point, our users can search for stocks, add them to a favorites list, and see their watchlist update dynamically. But the app still needs one more feature to match its purpose of helping me lose money. I need to know exactly when a stock hits an all-time high, because that's the perfect buying time to increase my chances of losing money. For that, we'll create a background task that runs on the server side. With BAN, this is straightforward since we can schedule an interval that checks each company in the watchlist against the stock API. If the latest price is higher than the previously stored max, we update the document in MongoDB with a new ishigh flag. Back on the front end, Alpine comes in handy here. We can bind a simple conditional to each stock row, so if ishigh is true, we apply a CSS class that highlights the entry. And with that, we've got the full picture. We can search for stocks, save them to a favorites list, keep everything synced, and even get notified when one of them hits an all-time high, all in under 10 minutes. Granted, this stack will not get popular anytime soon, and you and I are probably still stuck in a hot pile of Angular or React spaghetti code, but that's not really the point. The point is that the web doesn't have to be this endless maze of config files, bundlers, and dependencies stacked on top of each other, and we can actually do better. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and until next time, thank you for watching.